Hello everyone, it's La Baguette du Game for a new video. Today I'll be showcasing 22 tips to improve your skills. One common beginner mistake is not recalling your scouts. After scouting the first and second ring around your town hall, you no longer need them. Recall them to gather food. This also applies to military units. Sometimes you'll need to create units to clear your surroundings. Don't keep them, either sacrifice them or recall them as villagers. In the early game, build your buildings just in time when you need them. Each building has an upkeep and building too early can make it difficult to acquire the necessary resources. For example, start building your house at 30% when you're about to get your 6th villager. The numbers displayed next to your resources show your balance every 10 seconds. 1 month equals 1 minute. Multiply this number by 6 and you'll get how much you'll gain or lose in a month. A wounded unit loses 20% production. It's not worth keeping them, especially in the first year. Try to sacrifice them when facing a neutral attack. You can survive with zero food for at least two weeks before getting sick. The maximum time you can last at zero food is approximately one month if you're not losing too much food. The more food you lose, the faster your people will get sick. Build your buildings near your town hall to reduce unit conversion time. Small details like this can save you a significant amount of resources. When building towers, position them at the maximum distance from where you anticipate attacks. For neutral defense, you can place them further forward to draw aggro first. If you have a shipwreck, you can delay building your woodcutter to expedite other steps in your build order. You can even go below 50 wood and construct the woodcutter after obtaining the shipwreck. There are many useful key bindings. Some of the most helpful ones include pressing G to select all villagers, holding control and clicking to assign only one person to a target building, pressing tab to select the next unit or building of the same type, pressing X to cancel any order, which is useful for correcting misclicks with your villagers, pressing E to select your entire army and adding control to select all your army except the militia. Lastly, using control plus one will assign the selected unit to the key one, which is useful for micromanaging your unit during fights. Speaking of micro, when clearing a unit with a warrior, it's better to hit, retreat and press X to attack again. This way, you can exploit the attack animation and minimize the number of hits you take. When using an axe thrower, you can move from one end of a tile to the other while inflicting damage during the wolf travel time. Once the wolf gets close, retreat and repeat the process. This method allows you to clear any melee tile without taking any damage. For tougher tiles like cobbles, you can use two act throwers and alternate tile dancing using key bindings to redirect the aggro. If the group of monsters starts to split, regroup them by dancing without attacking and then resume the process. With practice, you'll be able to clear any tile using this strategy. Mm -hmm. 
When attacked by a wolf, you can avoid having any wounded villagers. Simply alternate the aggro between your villagers after each one takes two hits, and not a single hit more. Mastering this technique requires practice. If you encounter a very difficult tie with only melee druggers to clear, you can do so without taking any damage. You'll need one axe thrower and another unit. Have one unit engage the druggers, kiting them around, while the axe thrower slowly eliminates them. Another method to handle difficult tiles is to split the aggro, which works well against elves. Send a shield bearer to one end and the rest of your army to the other end. Split the tile into two groups. This tactic, known as defeat in detail, is one of Napoleon's favorite and most efficient strategies. When fighting against another army, prioritize targeting the most damaging units first, rather than the warchief. If the enemy makes the mistake of attacking your wounded warchief, use it as bait. Tie dents and taunt the enemy into attacking your warchief. While they try to eliminate it, your army can wipe out their forces. If you have a raven in your team, let it handle the scouting. Scouting will grant the raven lore and increase its scouting speed. You can assist by scouting up to 90% of the tiles and letting the raven deliver the final blow. If you have an eagle in your team and he doesn't have a ruin, consider giving him one of yours. This investment will pay off, as he'll be able to recruit his warship much sooner and progress faster than your opponent. If you are playing as a clearer, you might wonder which clan to clear first. Here's a list of clans to clear. Priority 1 includes clans that absolutely require clearing or they fall behind. Clear them before October 800. Priority 2 consists of clans that can manage without clearing during the first year but would appreciate uh, a clearing in the following month. Priority 3 involves clans that don't need clearing and should focus on clearing themselves. If you are attacked very early but don't have enough military units to defend, send all your forces. Your population can serve as a strong defense and easily repel a large army. As the attacker, the best course of action would be to retreat and besiege the enemy, forcing them to constantly move their population. If they do so and your economy starts to suffer, allow them to take a tile and instead defend in a zone where you can continue production. That's all for today's tips, I hope you enjoyed them and I'll see you in my next video.